Hello everybody and welcome to tip number 17 in 20 tips from Totally Tiffany. Thanks for joining me this month as we move through 20 tips that'll help you get your craft room organized better. My tip for you today is to keep your scraps with your paper collection, right? And there's a lot of ways to do that. So we have um, what we call the scrap master, right? So this is a big folder that has a slash pocket on the front, gusseted pockets on the inside, another slash pocket on the inside, and another big pocket on the back. And it is designed to hold all of your scraps by size. And as you saw, it's gonna fit right in your paper handler or your paper storage box. So keeping your scraps together by size makes it easy for you to find what you're looking for, keeps your scraps protected as well, keeps those edges and corners from getting bent up. So the scrap master is a great way to do that. Another way to do it is just something simple like our paper pocket. So you can see I've got all the green scraps in here. What I like to do is put the smaller scraps in the front, larger scraps to the back, and then I can kind of get a sense of just looking into this pocket of what sizes and shapes and colors I have in those scraps. So keeping your scraps with your paper means they're gonna be more useful. If you're looking for green, you can pull this out and go, okay, I have something big enough. I don't need to cut into another piece of paper. It's easy to add scraps to it as well. So these are both rainbow scraps, but you should be doing the same thing with themes and sentiment scraps, right? So if you have Christmas scraps or Easter scraps or day at the beach scraps or birthday scraps, whatever is left over from your project that's a usable size and that's important, you want to store that right with the paper that you have stored and that way you'll get the highest and best use out of it. What you don't want to do is keep scraps completely separate from all of your other paper because then you have to remember that they're in a different place and you have to go there to look for them. So my tip to you, oh, set a minimum scrap size as well, right? So different people craft differently, use different sizes and shapes of paper, but the vast majority of us have enough paper that if we got to craft a little bit every day for the rest of our lives, we would never even come close to using it up. And most of us are probably gonna buy one or two more sheets of paper in our crafting life as well. So set a minimum scrap size for yourself. What are you most likely to use? So for me, I love the idea of it has to be 12 by six, but I can't quite get my stomach around that when I'm putting things away. So if it's four by six or six by six, I'm gonna keep it. Anything smaller, I'm gonna go ahead and let it go unless it is some sort of specialty paper, some beautiful vellum or velvet or cork paper, something really unique then I'm gonna keep smaller size scraps in that. But for basic scraps, for basic papers, anything that doesn't meet my minimum is gonna go away. And that means that when I need something, I'm gonna have a big enough size to actually work with it. So I know that gives all of you or some of you a little bit of a stomach ache thinking, oh, I can't get rid of those scraps of paper, I might use them. But I want you to keep in mind when you're actually crafting, do you want to spend your time crafting or do you want to spend your time digging through little tiny scraps of paper looking for something and then pulling it out and finding out oh it has a notch out of the corner or it's not quite long enough or those types of things right so in all of those choices you're trading your time to look for that thing for your time to actually be crafting so keep that in mind and it's different for everybody and everybody's tolerance for that is different but remember there's a trade-off for everything so if, my advice to you, pick a minimum scrap size, anything that doesn't meet that scrap size. At the very end of your project, when you're cleaning up, goes in the recycle bin or the donate bin or however that works. Maybe you have kids that you give your scraps to, that type of thing. So get your scraps organized within the four section system. Store your scraps with your paper, whether it's rainbow or themes and sentiments or calendar year, and you'll be able to find everything quickly and easily, and you'll use more of it too. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'll see you tomorrow.